Hello and welcome to this tutorial. In this video we will create a small Möbius loop with a road going around the loop and some cars driving on it. So let's start. We start with an empty scene and we have our default cube here. On the default cube I created a geometry nodes network. We start with a spiral curve. Connect the spiral curve to the output. We set the start and end radius to the same value and the height to zero. Rotations needs to be set to one, so the curve starts and ends at the same point. We crank up the resolution and we link the radius to a parameter so we can control it from outside the node tree. Now we need a, another curve that we can use as a profile to extrude along our spiral. I'm using a curve line for this. I set the start and end point to define the, uh, the width of our loop. And then I set the curve tilt to control the, uh, the rotation along the curve. I am using the curve factor and multiply it by pi to get the uh, yeah, Möbulus loop shape. But here we can see that something is wrong. The start and end points are not aligned anymore. To fix this we simply rotate it by half pi and then it's perfectly aligned. Now I am merging the endpoints of our loop because it was not connected before. I'm adding a bit more of resolution and width to my to my loop. And I will create a parameter to control the width of the loop from outside of the node tree. You can see now we have a front and a back side and on the um, point where they meet uh, front and back side are pointing into the opposite direction. To fix this we need to add some thickness to the curve. So we have an outside everywhere. Basically all the polygons point to the outside. To do this we can use the extrude node. And here we have a problem because we merged before so I will probably go without the uh, merge node. Yeah, this looks good. Then we set the thickness to a quite low value because we will do the final thickness later on. I will add another extrude node and uh, control the offset scale here with a value node so I can put the same value to both extrude nodes. And I have to multiply it by minus one for the uh, for the second extrude. And now we have another problem. The uh, second extrude is inverted, so we uh, yeah we see the back faces. So to fix this, we can just simply use a flip faces node. Put this here and. Uh, no, maybe I will. I will. I will put this after the extrude. You can also put this before the extrude node, but then you will need to ex offset it with a positive value, and it should work the same way. So now we have another problem. Our curve is not merged at the um, outer points or our extruded parts. So um, here now we add another merge node. And now we need to be careful with the merge distance so we don't merge um, too many points together. And this is the reason why we extruded it uh, with a quite low value before, because we can add the final thickness later with another extrude level. 
And now here we are facing another problem. We have some internal faces that are created by the extrude node. And now we have to delete those faces first before we can continue. We can select those faces here, basically with the curve endpoints, because we can um, we can store um, an attribute about the uh, the endpoints of our original curve on the um, on the spline, and then use this attribute that we stored to delete the faces only the faces that are at this point. So for this, let's store an attribute. We use the endpoint selection. We use an attribute capture. Set it to boolean. Plug in our endpoint selection and plug this into the um, delete node. Now this deletes too much. Let's see how we can fix it. Ah, okay, never mind. The problem was it was set to points. This was my mistake here. It needs to be set to faces and then it works. Okay, perfect. And now we have the foundation of our loop created. We have no internal faces anymore. And now we can add another level of, of extrusion. I will make this here a little bit thinner maybe. I have to lower the um, merge distance. Yeah, this is better because we will remove those um, faces there later on and just keep the uh, final extrusion as for the thickness. So now add another extrude node. Plug it into the output. And we use the mask from the top faces from the um, one extrude or from the other. So we extrude both sides to the outside. Now we can add another merge. And we can get rid of our internal or our base geometry. And that's it. Now we have the uh, basic loop shape established and we can move on with the roads. Okay, now we can continue with the road generation. I'm using the same base spiral curve to generate the roads. First, we just simply add a curve to mesh node and in the end we will we will merge both outputs. First I will add a material to our terrain so we can distinguish between our terrain and our road. I already prepared something. It's a simple green material. Now we add a material to our road and join both in the end. For the road I'm also using a curve line, but now we first need to create both sides of the road. Because the road runs around both sides of our Möbius loop. So we first need to uh, create a uh, somehow placeholder mesh or our working mesh that creates the road curves. The width of our curve line here depends on how far we extruded our mesh in the um, in the upper part of our node tree. But I will just adjust our upper part of the node tree so it fits to the uh, to the road geometry. Okay, now let's create our curves for the um, our base curves for the roads. So first, let's merge it together. So the endpoints getting collapsed. 
and then I will do some kind of small trick. I'm extruding the mesh, but I keep the distance to zero. And now I can delete all the top faces of the geometry and now we have only the, uh, the curves that run around that run around our loop. But still it's they, these are not curves at the moment, these are still meshes. But they are perfectly running around the loop, they are on top of our surface. Just beautiful. Now it's time to convert them to curves. Simply use a mesh to curve node. Clean this up a little bit. And now we add another curve to mesh node to give our roads some some width. Use another curve line here. And now we need to align our the curve tilt to our surface. And that's a bit problematic. For this I am using a node group that I found on I guess it was on Stack Exchange some some months ago and modified it a little bit. You can get the node group in the um, video description if you want, because it's a bit yeah, it uses a lot of math. I will also link the original article if I find it again. So now I'm adding the uh, curve tilt on surface node group. First, let's add some, yeah, some debugging, debugging nodes. It's also a node group that is, yeah, will be included in the file. It's simply some some arrows that show you. Uh, yeah, vector directions can be useful. And now let's add our curve tilt on surface node. And this one uses a curve as a, as the first input, and you need a surface where the curve tilt will be aligned on as the second input. To speed up the calculations, I'm separating just the top side of our surface, so only the top faces are getting used for the uh, calculation of our curve tilt. Especially when your setup gets bigger and you're having higher res meshes, it's better to have a lightweight geometry to calculate the tilt. And now with the curve tilt node connected, our debugging shapes are perfectly aligned to our surface. They now flow around the surface. Now let's disable those debug shapes and switch to our road geometry. Give it a little bit more width. It's important that you adjust the width on start and end, otherwise you will have a gap somewhere. You could also add UVs now in this step by using the curve factor, but they are not perfect, you will have at least one seam. And now it's time to give the road a little bit more of an, yeah, of an interesting shape. For this, after the uh, curve tilt on mesh, we simply add a set position node. And with this node, we can offset our curve. And we will use the curve normal, which points to the to the side of the curve, to offset our curve. First, add a scale node. Then we can you can already see that we can move our curve along the surface. I will maybe raise the distance 
from the curve to the surface a little bit. I will simply do it by moving the road a little bit more, a little bit higher, but just a tiny little bit. Yeah, like this. Now we add another scale node. And now we use a noise texture to uh, yeah to distort our road. And as you can see, when we connect it, uh, it immediately starts to uh, distort our road. Use a map range node because the noise only goes from zero to one, but we also want it to go from minus one to one. And with the map range node, we can fix this. Then we have to really uh, lower down the scale to get a nice and smooth road. I also lower the detail to one to give make it less yeah less rough. And here we have it. We have a slightly distorted road that runs along the surface of a Möbius loop. And if you want to uh, control it from the outside, you can even you can add to the position vector of the input. I'm calling it seed because it's basically the random seed of my whole node setup. And now when you add this to the position vector, you can change the appearance of the, uh, of the noise. In the next step, we will add some cars that drive on our road. Okay, now it's time to add some vehicles to our road. To make our cars move, we first need to capture attribute node, and we use this to um, capture an attribute of the ID, of the point IDs of our curves. But since the point IDs are integer values and they go from 1 or from 0 to something, we need to map those to a range from 0 to 1 so we can use it as a factor to control our car movement. To do this, we simply use an attribute statistic node and we uh, pick the maximum value of the statistic node and divide it um, and divide the current index by the maximum. And we can then capture this attribute on our road curve. Now let's add a resample node and set this to length. This length now defines the um, distance between our vehicles or our cars. So I'm connecting this to an input parameter, so we can control it from outside of the node tree. Now I'm adding a curve to points and set it to evaluated, so it uses the length that we defined previously. Now let's instance some debugging shapes on our points. I will use the collection later to instance some cars. First, let's use a cube. And now let's connect this here to the uh, to our node tree. And now we have some cubes here. And their distance is pretty low. Let's set this to like two meters or three meters. Yeah, this looks fine. But now our cars are still static, so we um, now need to uh, sample sample the position based on the uh, factor that we stored previously, combined with an offset value. So I'm adding a sample curve node. And now I'm using the uh, previously stored attribute and I'm adding a value to it. This is our offset value that we can use to move the um, points. And I'm using a wrap node so um, we can loop the value. Now we have to set the uh, position of our generated points 
and use the sampled location to drive the position value. Now when we adjust the uh, second input of the add node, we can already see that we can offset our curve. So we make the distance a bit higher and here you can see that our cars or basically our cubes are moving. So to move it with the uh, timeline, simply add a scene time node and divide it by a pretty high value. And now you can see when we go to the timeline our points move. But we're still having one problem, our points are not, or our cubes are not aligned to the road. To do this we can use the tangents and normal from the sample curve node. First let's connect simply the tangent to a, a line order to vector. So first align the um, rotation to the tangent of our sample curve. This will make the points follow the curve but it will not use the um, current curve tilt. To also use the tilt we uh, combine our tangent and normal. So now we plug in the normal to another align Euler to vector and we use the rotation of the tangent to drive as a base for the uh, alignment of the normal and set the alignment of the normal to Z. And now our cars are following the surface and now basically this is already working but I noticed that um, in some cases you might see some flipping. Sometimes cars are simply uh, bouncing around, they do a 360 degree flip. So for me to fix it, I'm simply using the cross product to create a more stable vector between the tangent and normal. The cross product, use tangent and normal and connect this to the second input. So now here this still basically looks the same but um, but it fixes the flipping that might appear in some cases. Especially when you have a lot of cars you will notice that some if one car is simply doing 360 degree flips all the time it can be very annoying and for me yeah it fixed it. Okay, now let's connect our road again, or our base terrain, and now we can use some real cars. I already loaded a small collection of cars that I created for my Möbius loop setup, and now I'm simply connecting it to our instance on points node. And here you can see our cars are driving on the surface, but somehow they are, yeah, they are driving wrong. So to fix this, simply add a rotate instances node and yeah, rotate the instances so they are following the road. This looks this looks nice. Our instances are still very big, so we can add another input here that we control from the outside. Set it to a float value. And we name the scale. Now we can control it from outside of the node tree. Still our cars are sticking in the ground. That's because we uh, offset our road geometry. So we can simply add a translate instances node to fix this issue. And now we have some some car meshes that are driving on our Möbius loop. To break up the distribution of the cars you can simply add a random value node and set it to boolean and connect this one to the uh, selection of the instance points. So you can filter out the instance points by a probability value. So if you set it to 1 there will be cars everywhere and if you set it to 0 then there will be no cars. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and, uh, and if, you, if you spot some mistakes or have some ideas how to make it better or how to improve it, just leave it in the comments below. I will put a link to the uh, 
final result here in the video description so you can play around with the end result if you don't want to build it by yourself. Also the uh, curve tilt on surface node is included inside of this file. Bye! Thank mm -hmm. you.